We are back and getting ready to go into the finals here for the European Grandmasters. Week number one of this Swiss. I'm Raven and joining me is Sotil. Of course, we've been with you all weekend for Europe, but there's plenty more action to come. Not only is there a finals happening very, very shortly, but then we're going to be going straight into the Americas a little bit later on. And that's going to be brought to you by, of course, TJ and Frodan. Who else? But that's going to be an exciting one. And for me, at least, it's going to be great because it looks like I'm going to have enough time to watch it before my bedtime, so it's going to be pretty sick. Um, but let's focus on this one. It's going to be Ball Control versus Sylvan Aim and Sotl. We get to see the mage, probably, I'll say, um, as it is not banned out. The Warlock going to be banned out from Sylvan Aim. Uh, sorry, of Sylvan Aim's Warlock is going to be banned out. And the Rogue going to be banned out by, uh, from Ball Control. So the Highlander Rogue off the table, but at least the mage is still in here. Wow. Uh, first things first, imagine sleeping instead of watching America's Grandmasters. Like, who does that? But if I Secondly, watch America's, I... I can't watch Asia Pacific. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, you can't. Like, just develop a debilitating sleep disorder. I highly okay. recommend it. It's excellent. Just if you want me to be worse at casting with you, Sotl, I will stay awake. <laughs> that is fine. And if people say, why, why are you worse this week? I'm probably not to sleep. So it's, it's a problem that now. Is... <laughs> Very fair. Secondly, I remember to un unmute my microphone coming off a break. Which is a <laughs> First time for everything, for guys. Congratulations. But thirdly, uh, yeah, ball control's rogue getting banned. Interesting stuff because, you know, I was talking about it on uh, on day one. It's, we've mentioned a couple of times it did pick up very easy wins, but uh, Boar was kind of gifted at, at least one of them by the, the Edwin gods. And then Boar himself didn't seem like overly confident in the deck. So it's been a day of uh, pretty interesting looking bands really from uh, from multiple players. Yeah, it really has. He does have this no hands warrior. And uh, again, just yeah, an another slight variation. I do, the more I play the, the lists without Corcoran, the more I feel like Corcoran actually might be a staple for me at least so because having the option for some burst damage i feel is needed now and again uh, maybe it's just the way i play but i like it just being there even as ball control is doing as a one-off yeah and it's not when you say a bit of burst damage it's not a bit of burst damage. a tad it's an enormous, a little tad bit yes a small tad bit of burst damage that it's <laughs> it's enormous that can come through mm. when you get in a rage and rampage and blood Swarm mercenary and everything else um, and stacked up on top of that as well it's insane and it's even one of those things that's harken back to older days of talking about hearthstone where maybe even just the fact that it's a threat in the deck and what that does to your opponent as well is worth a certain amount but yeah just the fact that it's possible is nice for us. So a lot of the versions of the deck aren't playing really any burst damage from hand, which means if, you, if you're in a rough spot, you cannot just kill someone with a good draw. You know, you, you just can't do it because the charge minions aren't there. But anyway, Silver Name is going to be rocking that spell mage as well. So I'm excited to see how that goes up, mainly against this Tempo Demon Hunter and this Warrior of Boar Control, as I feel like versus the Warlock, it's a very different matchup and the warlock can probably just out sustain especially because any burn damage the mage can do can be healed and any minion pressure is normally quite slow and stompy which well warlock just play the flames it away and it doesn't care so i think the warlock might be the stumbling block here for uh, silver name at least yeah we'll see but we were just talking about the uh, the no hands warrior from mm -hmm. ball control this is his list which is very similar to i guess pure no hands warrior the list that no hands gamer himself is running uh one corcoran elite was cut down to from two very early on and still running uh, the eggs and the injured tollbears as kind of the the early game package to be able to push through which i, I quite like yeah, even the imprisoned valfiends and you know people are cutting them in certain versions of the list now as well so you know this this pain warrior i guess archetype is starting to you know tread down multiple different paths of what they want to do but honestly just looking at this list from board control the highlight for me is just that corcoran because sometimes you just need that extra bit of burst I mentioned a little bit earlier on. I actually uh, misspoke there because the, the Captain Greenskin has come in, in in place of some of the early game minions like the Injured Tollbeer, which is actually a card that I want to highlight because I have not been playing Greenskin in my experiments with that deck so far and I think I'm going to start based on what I've seen because that card has impressed me enormously. Uh, perhaps not so much in Europe in the games we've been casting from what I remember but from some of the other GM games from the other regions that I've watched Captain Greenskin has seemed incredibly powerful yeah, and as we take a look at Silver Name's Spell Mage, one thing I'll just add a note on that. For me, I think, I don't know if you remember me saying yesterday or the day before, but Ankar felt like it was always, you know, the second or whatever swing wasn't getting me pirates that often. 
So you, you know, especially because you kind of mulligan them for the pirates a lot of the time as well. It, so if Greenskin's there as an extra, you know, like late game pirate by the time you use that second swing, then yeah, I'm all for that plan, at least trying it out because at least logically it makes sense. But let's go into it. It is going to be Silver Name on the Mage and Bulk Troll on the Warrior that we just broke down. And my questions now is how good is this mage against what you could argue is a kind of aggro deck, right? It, it's not always aggro, but it is a lot of the time. For sure, yeah. I still definitely have my doubts about this deck. I think uh, Silver Name was kind of in trouble in the one time that we saw it yesterday and was dug out by the Prime um, itself, oh, yeah. which, you know, the, pr the Prime will almost always be good on its own, but then the Prime also cast a puzzle box, which was then also a good puzzle box for Silver Name. Um, so I think probably a fairly fortunate outcome for Silver Name in this one game with the deck so far. Yeah, there's one of the key cards for me, and it might not really look too flashy, but when you're talking about Primes, it is. It's the font of power there. And I think, honestly, from my uh, you know, foray with this deck, the font of power has been the card that I feel has impacted the outcomes of games the most by far. <laughs> On ball control side though, getting the anchor down and now there's the battle rage. He's starting to piece together just the good hand right now. So he's by no means in trouble yet. Rips the font of power, gets a Cadgar, which can make some exciting business happen, but also Cloud Prince is quite often a pretty good outcome from that card, uh, especially since you have uh, Ancient Mysteries available to you mm -hmm. to get a zero mana secret, so you can essentially just combo those two cards together with the Cloud Prince on the same turn, basically on demand. Yep, Naga uh, Sandwich, not mind-blowing, maybe even arguably bad at the moment. A lot, a lot of the spells in the deck are quite cheap. Uh, so you could say that is you know kind of a whiff there are some expensive stuff but nowhere near as much as they are all the the cheap stuff he has in hand as you can see so two out of three ain't bad yeah, i you'd, guess you'd have to manipulate a very specific hand right. for sandwich to give you value i think right yeah so then would have to have a very specific set of spells for uh <laughs> for, for this situation and then the sandwich will find them and <laughs> it will go. make them cost five there's that Korokron. Not needed quite yet, I don't think. Because I think board control now is just sat, as you can see in the uh, traditional thinking pose of just two hands on the face. Um, thinking of, right, how, when, where, and why do I use this battle rage? Because <laughs> he has the tools to activate it pretty heavily right now. And who do I use this battle <laughs> rage? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I'm made to fit. Yeah, just playing his stuff. It's interesting because it was this was again a similarity with you know sort of old school patron warriors. There were certain matchups where some things that you would sort of normally treat as combo pieces, you just had to learn that you were supposed to play them, just like play out your stuff. Like against Druid in particular with Patron Warrior, I remember you know specifically just improving my win rate a lot by just starting to play my minions on curve. You know, so it's like frothing Smith Berserker on, on three. Right? Yeah, Armor Smith <laughs> on two, Acolyte on three, or frothing on three, or whatever else. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 pretty strong a lot of the time. I think Boar very much falling into that here. And what what do you think about this play? This interests me quite a lot actually. And um, the Cloud Prince fully get behind, but killing off the Vile Fiend and not the Armor Smith. Uh, is he confident that the the minion will be able to just kill the armor smith or does do you think that silver name thinks he can take a late game even if there's loads of armor gain yeah i think the latter i think his primary concern here is just um win board so be concerned with stats first and foremost mm -hmm. um i don't think any kind of burn plan is going to work in this matchup anyway so that's not really your primary concern so i think just being as efficient as you can in terms of stats on board is how silver name will have most success in this matchup okay and there's that green skin you're a fan of and we saw even with again a couple of pirates in the early game for ball control the anchor got its full potential draw value and partially down to that green skin Someone's yep lead the charge. so boar is gonna rage hit Got himself down to 29. Gets three injured minions in play. Two mana draw four. And Silvername, you just see the mental impact of your opponent playing a battle rage with this deck. He's just destroying because you know now they have so many tools. That, as I said yesterday, it's not only just card draw, but it's you're drawing cards that all intertwine and, and synergize to work together 
in doing some yep. pretty incredible things, honestly. And now does, does Silverdam just have to so... maybe just play another Flame Ward and just say, let's get rid of these guys and get them out of the way? Yeah, I don't mind this. He's got nothing exciting going on in his hand. And also, that Ancient Mysteries does nothing right now. It is two mana, spend two mana. Is it really? Is he out of secret stuff? Yeah, he just used a Flame Ward. He's just done Barrier and the other Barrier's in his hand. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's his four. Still magic trick, King. Okay. Get him something a bit tasty. There's uh, tons of good mage spells, hence why there's a deck called Spell Mage. It'd be pretty bad if there wasn't. So you can get something even if it's just one of the cheaper ones. So how we used to have big Spell Mage, we now have bad Spell Mage. <laughs> so yeah, we're playing nothing but spells, but they're all terrible. Or considering just ripping this Battle Rage again, perhaps? Hmm. Currently has eight cards in hand and he'll draw four, so he will need to expend two cards before he can Battle Rage, and then still one more afterwards. And he knows regardless, these three minions are going to die if he wants to attack in with them, but I think his yes. board's never getting any smaller naturally, so just do it. You know, just, just get, get the secrets out of the way, and then the only secrets that will exist in the game going forward are generated ones, which board control just frankly can't really do much about until it happens right i wonder if he considered just um equipping weapon and just swinging the weapon there because the weapon doesn't prop the flame ward right so he still mm. he still keeps his minions hanging around that way you know silver name can't start developing here with any minion effects that he has of his own like a pexis blast or whatever else because you'll just essentially trade off minions that are already sentenced to death in that regards and then you also still keep the big battle rage options open to yourself. I think his hand still gets stuck if he does that, but I'm just sort of presenting it as an option. But I think he's he's right to kind of remove and just you know, redevelop again and try and get on with the game. Yeah, I, I think the issue is that's definitely definitely a strategy that can work a lot of the time. But in this matchup, does he want to make the game go a turn slower? Do you, you know what I mean? Like you said, one with his hand, but two sure. also against yeah, yeah, a spell yeah. mage. Does he really want the game to go late? And it would literally That's just delay question. the whole game one turn, wouldn't it? And I don't think right. Ball Control wants to do it. And he didn't have any ultra high value minions. The Risky Skipper was a 1 1. So that, that right. was done and dusted soon anyway. Oh, there's Amazing Reno. Saul's favorite card. Also, the Evocation, I found is a weird card in this deck, right? Because as you can see, you don't often run a low hand <laughs> yeah, uh, with sure. this. You often have quite a lot of cards. I had times where I was playing this to like generate two cards just to see what it gave me to do something. Because I, I don't know, it's not, if this was a hunter card, oh, best card hunter's ever seen. But because it's in this mage list, you generate so much anyway. I feel like it's really tough to use, and maybe we've got to keep an eye on it to make sure Silver Name doesn't try and hang on for like the nine card evocation, you know what I mean? Which is pointless most of the time. Yeah. I think Silver Name recognizes he's in a pretty comfortable spot here in terms of pressure, though, because he can Ray of Frost one more time, and then he has a Blizzard for a complete freeze over the next two turns, mm. and then that bridges his gap between his next turn, which is turn eight, and turn 10 when he can just drop the Reno for the full clear. Yeah. And so it seems like that will be the line he commits to here. If he needs something better than a single Ray of Frost in an emergency, I think that's probably where we'll see him uh, rip the evocation and look for something in there. Right, and, and that's where I think just recognition of how to use the card is, is the important, right? Because you're saying use evocation when you need a specific thing. Don't just yeah. go, I want... Well, when you need a range of things, right? Like, yeah. if you can play it where either Frost Nova, Blizzard, or whatever else will be good enough, then, yeah, that's probably a good time just to rip it, see if you get that right. spell, and then great. You and, know, and cashed out. I mean, I think a lot of players, especially maybe newer players less experienced, would go, well, this could give me nine cards. You know, and, and then they don't, you know, try and fish for something. They just go, I want nine cards, because that is value. And that's when it ends up either never getting cast, or you lose the game because you, you cast everything else kind of willy-nilly, you know, to just empty sure. hand. This Frost Nova, though, has made everything a lot mm. simpler for Silver Name. Would you? Oh. Hmm. 
Hmm. Doesn't matter. I was. Hmm. I really want to know what it was now. Okay. Oh, no, I'll tell you. I, I'm not, look. So come on, it's me. I don't care about saying dumb things. Okay. I've had a lot of practice. I was wondering All if right, there's ever everyone, everyone, strap in for this one. It's going to be get your belt on. Um, I wonder yep. whether the, there's ever just any thoughts at points versus this deck to say Blizzard because there's the Bomb Wranglers on the board and it fills mm -hmm. the board up. It does activate a Battle Rage, but Board Control has limited options when his board's just full and there's nothing to trade into, right? So, like, Wait, I'm I'm so disappointed. That wasn't dumb at all. I don't... Oh, well, okay. Yay. I'm so disappointed in you, Raven. Okay, so when <laughs> when I think it's dumb, it's actually really smart. Good to yeah. know. <laughs> good yeah, to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that, that's a good it. draw, though. If there was ever a draw to fix this situation. Yeah, crucially, um, like I think the key behind that play of using Blizzard there is that Blizzard says um, deal two damage to all enemies, then freeze them. Yes. Meaning deal two damage to all enemies, comma, then freeze all enemies is kind of like the implied card text, right? So you can see because of that, the bombs also get frozen that come out of the mm. uh, the bomb wranglers. So you do get a full freeze apart from the rush minion, which can't hit you in the face anyway. Yep. And also the bombs would only do damage, so it's definitely not the end of the world as it only would summon two. Ball Control is going to take this moment and maybe take this half gift to use the Battle Rage and say, well, if you Blizzard, that was your turn pretty much. I'll spend two mana on Battle Rage because I can't spend a ton of mana on minions. Although, honestly, it looks like a good Terran to me. It does, yeah. I wonder, like, if Boar had, like, found uh, an Inner Rage, if he still has one left, which I think he does, off that... Um... Battle Rage, then he could have just made two of the world's most stacked Terrans you've ever seen in your life, which I, would have been pretty insane. I think, though, looking at this, he has Corcoran and two Mercs, right? I think yep. if he has Inner Rage, he's aiming that to the dome. That's a good point. That is a good point, Because yeah. he's got all the cards. There's only eight cards left. He's going to get to it. And that can't be frozen because it happens. Like I said, this is one of the reasons why I, lo I love even just the one Corcoran because it gives you this as an option. It, it, it's, it exists as a plan. Whereas if you don't run any charge minions, this will never happen outside of a deck hand, technically. But you can't duplicate it. And reflect. Yeah. Find some way to buff your deck hands. <laughs> yeah. so you can then inner rage it. So you can then, yeah, that, that seems unlikely. You start running the. Uh, oh. Oh, what's the card? The one two that gives plus two health. Okay. The, pre the one that's played in Combo Priest, what's it called? Oh, yeah, uh, Beaming Cycle. That's it, Beaming Sky. Yeah, you just play that just in case you get that cans. <laughs> now that is going deep. Yeah, the turn's going to be frozen here just to stop any, uh, to minimize damage to face. And also maybe to try and stop some shenanigans. But really, it's just to reduce that damage. Uh, but ball control is not far away from getting to the bottom of his deck. So you can now use Skipper as an activator for Corcron, but only with one Bloodsworn Mercenary in that world for mana constraints. I think he can wait. There's no rush here, is there? Agreed. Just pointing it out mm. as a possibility. <laughs> Just saying he could. <laughs> this is... Is Boar thinking about Bloodsworning the Terran? I think it's overkill, right, to Bloodsworn the Terran. Like, you're never going to have board space for all of that stuff, are you? Well, I was even going to say the weird thing is he doesn't really want to play any more minions because this Terran's got, like, a full board oh. in it. He wants to pop it, right? Oh, this, he this wants to pop yeah, it. This makes sense. Yeah, this yeah, makes yeah, sense. yeah, yeah. This makes way more sense. Because that, that was my issue, right? If he plays minions, well, his Terran gets worse. So I think this is a real good heads-up play. Look at this board. It's a nightmare now. Unfortunate that he has to, or not unfortunate that he has to, or unfortunate that he is doing this into turn 10, which means it can be renoed, which is a shame, but the Terran could have been renoed anyway, which would have led to the same outcome, where at least Ball utilized something. It would have actually been a worse outcome because the uh, dormant minion true, wouldn't be true. there, right? Yeah, he gained he something just, from this. You know, silence and remove the Terran completely and the, the, the dormant guy would be gone as well. Now I'm going to see what's in the lackey box for now. But I imagine this is going to be along the lines of maybe even just get the, the evasive Felwing down, get the egg down and just make an awkward board for, for Silvername to cleanly clear. And then any damage these these minions, say one of these minions gets to hit. Well, that just comes closer to the Corcoran dream, doesn't it? 
Ah, nice. Impactful. I love it. Nice. Totemic Surge. Just a refresher as well. Not talked about it today, but uh, cards like Rolling Fireball and like every other card in the game just act as if dormant minions do not exist. So Rolling Fireball would just do nothing to the dormant minion and you cannot cast it on the dormant minion either. Yeah, to be clear, it skips past it. Yes, I think, yeah, it literally it, just it, doesn't it, exist. Yeah. yeah, saying it does nothing could be kind of misleading. So yeah, it skips past it. Yeah. So it'll do like five damage to a 5-5 five, five, and then skip past the dormant minion and deal three yeah. damage to a 3-3 three, three on the other side. Yeah, the, the easiest way, honestly, to just apply dormant or to remember it is it's just everything it's just acts like it does not exist. Yeah. Ton of options here. Blizzard, another rolling fireball, but it's more expensive, but it's going to go away at the end of the turn due to the evocation. Uh, Silverdome does have that. I think he was looking at Kadgai into Power of Creation. And honestly, if there's ever a time to go, I think it's now. It would also summon two uh, dragons as well, right? So it's two six sixes from the, from the quest. Should work like that. Yeah, I've it, never it, seen it. Happen, okay, it does but... work like that. Um, okay. Yep, because it's a summon. Really good set of combo here. And look at this board. Oh. Yep. So I got distracted now. I've just had to check all the lights in my room because I'm sure I can smell something burning. <laughs> oh, I think he roped out on the 3 4 kill as well. He did. Ooh. Oh no. That's three, three free damage for ball. That shouldn't exist. Which means should not exist. That damage at all. should be dormant right now. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. Oh, still no in a rage though. Oh. No, I know. And he can't draw. Nope. So the inner rage draw would have been lethal there for Boar. And the, uh, it, you might what forget, but know. these uh, these gyrocopters have wind fury. I, I think there's no more for their their rush ability. Is mm -hmm. wind fury doesn't often come into it too much because they normally die or whatever. But they do have wind fury, so ball control is likely quite dead if he doesn't actually do something about this board. Could be a world of difference, the mistrade though. It's massive. Got to remember as well, this Reno is going to cast a spell at the start of every turn, which means, frankly, the board state could dramatically change. We're going to roll the 8 drop. It's been a while Ooh. since just rolling a random Tyrion was the way that you got the job done, but it's back, ladies and gentlemen. That was a, a really good evolve, honestly. That was just like exactly what he needed. Random he turned demons! It... Oh! Random demons! Silver name, you can't even be upset. You're the one who's friends with Reno. He does this all the time. Two of them are dormant, Raven. They don't do anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. That would make us rich. <sighs> Live by the Reno, die by the Reno. That's it. Reno. I mean, it's fine to be disappointed, but this happens, right? You know what I mean? Like, the deck does this. Reno does this. Sometimes he wins your games, and sometimes he just slaps you in the face. If I could just cast that. That combined with a couple of things. Silvernay missed the 3-4 trade, which was some extra damage. And also the Tyrion Evolve for ball control was pretty fantastic. Because especially with turning the minions into, uh, sorry, turning the spells into the demons, there's no clean way to actually just kill off a Tyrion. There's no, you know, polymorph, no spell that can get rid of it or mess with it. He just has to do it the old fashioned way. And Silvernay is in kind of race situation here so he doesn't really want to have to be chunking tons of damage into a Tyrion. and in a rage for four again five cards remaining i think two of them are in a rage i don't think he's played one this game no and i can confirm he is running two. Oh, oh there in we a go rage off the top for four finally He's going to get that sweet, sweet Bloodsworn Mercenary value alongside that Ashbringer. 23 damage in total, I believe. Plenty to have Silver Name nicely covered here. Yeah, and this is just, again, winds back to just from my limited experience. I've not played hundreds of games of the Warrior lists, but that is something that a lot of players cannot even try and do because they just don't have access to the Corcoran, right? They, they can't even try and do a burst plan because they need to stick minions to be able to damage their opponent. 
And because of just one Corcoran being in the deck and the fact that you can draw so much of your deck, it makes even just a one of that little bit more consistent and that little bit more achievable. Yeah, I think one makes sense. Hmm. Um, and I am not the guy that advocates playing one <laughs> you off hate in your it. deck. If you, if you are not... <laughs> If you are not familiar with uh, many of the the hills I have chosen to die on in the past, um, but I think one Corcoran in this deck makes sense because you I... don't want to play two. Essentially, shut your eyes and imagine it's Leroy, right? And you, you right. put Leroy in your deck and you're only allowed to play one. If, and... if you're like me and it makes you sick to play single copies of cards, just think of it that way. Yeah, That's and honestly, I remember even years ago when we were casting your old school like playoffs, we had hundreds of deck lists and players to look at. And now and again, Sotl would just scan through some deck lists oh i like this one and it's just two ofs there's there's no maybe there's a legendary in there that you two legendaries that you have to do we would be like i like this lineup i was like why it's got a lot of two ofs in it <laughs> that's it 15 <laughs> two ofs you yes. would go sick every time it's very very funny i'm not even making this up honestly ask any of the other casters that were there every time but yes board control is going to be leading this matchup in this final one and zero over silver name so far it was a pretty crazy game and silver name got the rough end of the stick a little bit but honestly he had good selps he had good outcomes from his power of creation he had the learn draconic dragons on board as well he primed himself for a ton of damage to go about board control's way to steal the game and reno had other things to say by the, by the looks of it so unfortunate for silver name but there's plenty more games left yeah i'm not sure how much of a difference you know obviously the warlock uh, the runs was you know exciting or whatever people think mages um but it's um i'm not sure how much of an impact i'm trolling so hard it's um i'm not sure how much of an impact it had on the game in the end because the burst damage was still the burst damage right like regardless of what he was going to be able to do to react to that board state if he still had his mage cards available i think that burst damage was always going to come through one way or the other yep with the bow rages played only a matter of time but ball control looks like he is going to be locking in his tempo demon hunter which Again, looks pretty clean. There is a one-of in there, Sotl. I apologize for ball control, but hey, legendaries cause these things to happen. But I will say, and I said it again yesterday, I am liking the consume magic in Silver Name's deck. I'm not saying it'll be absolutely mind-blowing in this exact matchup, which is more or less the mirror, but just as a card, I, I like it a lot. I've actually started to put it into the list I'm playing at the moment. Just a one-of, but just the one silence. You know, a lot of the time it cycles. I think it's a pretty solid inclusion right now. Okay. Uh, by the way, this is legal, by the way, because there's three legendaries in the deck. So in order for yeah, there you to have three to, legendaries right? in the deck, you have to play a one. Or that, are you forced is, to play a fourth legendary? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is okay. that is legal. I, I will allow it. So, kicking this off. Ball Control has a Battle Fiend. And he has a Crimson Sigil Runner. Twin Slice and the Beam means that he's got a very easy way to manipulate his hand for Outcast. Not that he needs it right now, but he can do it quite easily. Even if he chooses to just I-Beam next turn to activate the Sigil Runner. Whereas Silver Name getting off to a slightly slower start but he does have the weapons available along with that frenzied foul wing which means he can have maybe one quite swingy turn with some removal from the weapon the generation of minions and maybe getting the frenzied foul wing down as well yeah and i imagine uh chaos strike is now the next draw for silver name i assume that's what he's going to have picked out of those options looks like uh, the best in the way that his hand is lining up at the moment. Uh, Boar's actually got a difficult decision here, though, as to whether he wants I to go full-on tempo this turn, because it is a possibility that's available to him. Just rip the slices, and then I beam the minion, and then he can even then play a, a Crimson Sigil I, Runner as, as Outcast as well. I think I'd like it, and it's because the sure. Spectral Sight is going to be stranded for a while if not. Mm. So do the tempo turn. Tempo is not a bad thing in this matchup. It's really good. You can mm -hmm. do removal. You can play your cards. You don't even have to use the second slice because it like teleports to the other side of your hand once you cast the, uh, the twin slice. And it just makes the special sight uh, more activatable. Um, so he did go a bit of a different way about it there. I think I would have yeah, maybe even coin high beam but it is available for him next turn anyway but i just wanted him to see just edge towards the spectral site yeah played the two one there just literally as a tempo two one but held on to the i beam uh it just so happens that this turn uh umberwing was really the only thing 
that Demon Hunter does that I Beam is not effective against. Um, so it's made that look a little bit silly. Demons. But I, you can see the, the significance Demons. of it, right? And if there was just another Demon Hunter style minion that came down this time, this turn, if it was a Frenzied Failwing, mm. if it was a Satyr, if it was any of those other things, having held on to that I Beam would have made a lot of sense. Does he now just bite? Does, does he just bite the bullet? Demons. Well, I just I beam spectral sight this turn anyway. Yeah. The only the only that coin, that coin is a really freaking good card though right now, Raven. Oh, if you look at the rest of his hand. I, I was literally gonna say the only issue now is be especially because of the skull, the coin glaive next turn is a pretty big deal. Especially, I think that has to be the curve. Especially yeah. when you're feeling, or at least yeah. I imagine ball control's feeling like he's falling a little bit behind here on board. Right. Yeah, and then as you sort of walk it through, if you are going to leave yourself open to coining Glaives, or now maybe even coining 7-4 next turn, um, that means that you're very rarely going to get to outcast that um, Spectral Sight, so right. you might as well just play it and draw for one. Which I like. I definitely don't like overholding on to things like, ah, but I could get this other effect. It's like, right, when? <laughs> it is the question, right? It's like, when are you even going to get to this? In the meantime, though, Silver Name. It's got War Glaives, he's got the Fellowing, got Chaos Strike for extra damage. Like, Silver Name is definitely sitting in, in the aggressor seat right now, whereas Board Control has the uh, the juice to go long, but does he have the time? Because even this Satyr is a nightmare to deal with, but he does have the I Beam. I grow impatient. Yeah, it's become a bit of a nightmare, though, because of the I Beam nerf. The fact that he actually has to pay mana for that card <laughs> now is quite distressing with the way the rest of his curve How works. dare Demon Hunter have to pay mana for cards? I know. Why do only druids get to play every card <laughs> in their deck for free? Hmm. I think it's important to get the War Glaive active, honestly. I think he wants it active now, and then he has the Adept. So much damage, though. But he has the recovery options of I-Beam. He does have Adept as well, depending. Short. But problem, again, he uh, can't play both of those next turn if he goes War Glaives hmm. this turn. You probably won't need to, though, right? Because Warglaives can multi-swing. Yeah. It hurts, but I think this is the, the way. I think it is. I mean, I, I'm arguing with you because I hate this play, but I cannot suggest a different alternative. So I guess that means that all his plays kind of suck, and this is just the best right. one of them. He still has two swings of the Warglaives. He still has the I Beam as recovery if he needs it. But even now, he's on 18, so he's not like he's going to just die right now. So even if the I Beam isn't played next turn, it probably still comes into play the turn after. Mm -hmm. Unless it's Skull, and then Ball Control will just wish he played the I Beam on turn two or whatever it was <laughs> earlier in the game. Yeah, I mean, that's just really the big branching path of yeah. this game, right? Is uh, Bors can decision not to tempo out super hard and use the I-Beam early on. He's now been stuck with an I-Beam for quite some he time. But that frenzied Felwing coming down, surprisingly, could actually be Bors' savior here. Yeah. Actually finally giving him the perfect target for that card. Just to know, not only could the I-Beam uh, could have ended up being stuck in his hand, but also he would have drawn a card from the Sigil Runner, wouldn't he? So yep. there would have been, you know, an, an, an and extra he would have, added and he would have out, And he would have outcasted his Spectral Sight as well. Yes, <laughs> so he would have drawn two extra little. cards. Yeah. Wow. But again, like I said at the time, it looks stupid because Silver Name just went Umberwing straight afterwards. If it was just a regular minion, if it was Satyr Overseer that turn, it ball would have looked like a genius with the play that he made. Yes. Uh, Welcome to Hearthstone. <laughs> A part of me likes getting this adept down, honestly. You can't skull next turn though if you don't I use the I beam this turn. Short. Hmm. That kind of sucks. On the defensive, do you think he can skull next turn anyway? I think you can and should skull a lot more than a lot of people think you do. It's a lot of thinking, so I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> The reason I like this is because I don't think Silver Name can just take seven next turn, right? No. Agreed. So if Silver Name's answering you, you kind of heal anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he has to remove yeah. it in some respect. Oh, one mana would have made all the difference. 
please buff the Glade Bound Adept to cost four. <laughs> yeah. Imagine we're going to bring the attack down to six, but it's only cost four now. <laughs> You'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I grow impatient. And now, you know what this is very much like? Like mid-range hunter mirrors. Where there's always a point where one player has to make the choice where they just... They have to decide to say, right, I'm going in and just ignore <sighs> minions for the rest of the game. Yes. And, and it always yes. happens. And whoever does it and just about survives just always wins. Like, no doubt. Maybe a little bit different here because Demon Hunter has heal. You know, they have access to heal, which is a little bit different, but someone always makes the choice and it looks like Silver Nine making the choice right now. Oh, with a huge sigh of relief as he sees uh, the, the weapon damage go into that mm. uh, Gladebound Adept. Now, is there a payoff for playing the Adept now? There's I-Beam, but I think he might have to start with that Spectral Sight. Because he needs more than an eye beam. It's one of the the powerful interactions between the Sator and the War Glaives is it's every time you attack, so it's not limited to yeah. once a turn. Hmm. And this extra yeah, sure. two two is actually a very large problem. Those without eyes truly see. Sets up the draw for himself. The only card that would be playable this turn after the Spectral Sight is the Twin Slice there, though, so probably not exactly what he was looking for. He's going Altris? No, he takes Slice. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Short. So if he I beams the 4 2, he goes up to 10. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's not enough. Nope. It's like we got ourselves an yep. even series, Raven. It really does. I was just going through a few differences there, but not really the case. It's not going to make much difference as the Chaos Strike coming to use here. And honestly, Chaos Strike, a deck I didn't really foresee being overly used in Tempo Demon Hunter. After, you know, like a day or two into the game, I thought it was very much a, a combo Demon Hunter card. But, you know, Every time I see it get played in Tempo Demon Hunter, it puts in the work as a, oops, sorry, as I hit my microphone, uh, as a as a draw card and pushing extra damage capabilities. So it has impressed me quite a lot recently. Yeah, I, I think it's actually one of the most hotly contested cards as well. Like some players like really love it, swear by it, live and die by it. Like you have to play Chaos Strike in your deck. And then there's people on the other side as well. It's like, no, card's trash. Just, you know, play other minions instead. Play a Felfin or whatever else it is in that spot. So you actually have something that uh, develops the board and represents pressure. Um, I personally am a pretty big fan of it. I think it's a pretty solid card to have in there just because card draw begets card draw in that deck. You know, you, if you if you hit one cycle card, that's improving your chances of hitting another one, and right. then another one, and then another one, and then your Skull of Gul'dan, and then you win the game, right? So I think consistently drawing cards is very, very important with the way the deck functions, so I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of the card. Yeah, and also, it, we've seen a fair few games even just this weekend on stream of where Tempo Demon Hunter Reach has actually surprised me a little bit. You know, maybe I'm just, uh, I don't see it enough, but the actual just damage from almost nothing is incredible and you know chaos strike as you said goes a long way to that not only is it plus two damage but it's plus two damage draw a card that could either be more draw or more damage so then it does add up very very quickly and i think we've seen that a few times already where D you know demon does add an opponent on 20 health and you're like well that's what three turns worth of damage just as a random number right. and they get there in one and a half slash two and you're like what like you can't plan around this it's so much reach just because of the combination of card draw and damage from hand so impressive overall i am coming around to that card myself but let's move on with this series ball control versus silver name going into game number three ball control on his demon hunter once again and silver name on the spell mage yeah, reminder, because this is perhaps a little bit earlier than you might have expected if you're just joining the broadcast. We had an absolute lightning bolt of a first series, so we are now all the way through uh, into the finals for the week. So these players are playing for the maximum six points between them to end the week, which will affect their seeding going into weeks uh, three through, oh, sorry, four through seven in the uh, round robin portion of Grandmasters. Yep, it will affect their seeding in a very nice way, as they'll be uh, pretty confident about getting in that Division A, but we can talk about that 
a little bit later on for now. Ball control. Got an, a, an okay hand here. He does have the ability to just throw that twin slice effectively over to the other side of his hand and activate that spectral sight next turn if he chooses. And honestly, outside of his draw being pretty good, I don't see why not. Yeah. Get that draw engine going. So. I see. Need some help here because his hand is way too slow right now. Ooh, Frenzied Felwing, that helps a lot. You saw him immediately snap that second uh, the second slice, and then there you go, zero mana Felwing. Boom, jobs are good. Sounds like such a, a greedy card, doesn't it, second slice? So you want a second slice of pie? Yeah. You, know, you already had one. I want, a sec I want a second slice of Language Hacker's Banana Bread. No, wait, I never even got a first slice anyway. Like, who is this guy? He's so BM. Mm. Just admits he makes mean banana bread and then doesn't give it to anyone. Uh, so I uh, effectively lived next door to him for a few weeks and he didn't make me any banana bread. Oh. Yeah. Need, need to have words with that boy. I thought we were mates. Yeah. Here we go though. And uh, uh, again, interestingly enough, it's just it's gonna be cool just to see how Silver Name's deck does versus I think one of the decks it's got. Uh, a lot of its build around for right it, it wants to beat demon hunter not that you really build a deck at the really? moment to lose to demon hunter wow but he is gonna that be saving it. three damage wow yeah well he's saving two damage right because it means that a one one attacks him instead of a three three to activate the flame ward oh okay sure yeah yeah or does it which is yeah <laughs> right i mean it's like that is a really interesting ray of frost coin apexis blast wouldn't be too shabby here honestly and this is this is the explosive trap mind games of old, isn't it? When do you bite the bullet and, and remove minions, or when do you attack, or when do you wait? It's tough. Well, that's kind of why I'm a little bit perplexed by the Ray of Frost, because I think if you Ray of Frost there against a good player, like Boar, Boar will just say, okay, fine, I'm just going to wait until I can attack with this 3-3, and then I'll get more damage. Like, what are you going to do? Keep freezing yep. my 3-3 three, three every turn so right. that I can't proc your Flame Ward? Like, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. There must be a way. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't I don't really understand. Because he's now just ended up with Hexus blasting it anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. Not the best minion to come out as a 5-drop there, but he does activate his Dragon. It's not that bad. I mean, it has rush, you know. Like, yeah, true, true. Yeah. It may be understated, but it still does have rush, which is pretty effective. It's just there was some like pretty good five drop, like say taunts, for example, which would be pretty nice versus uh, Demon Hunter, obviously. But did kill off a one one and still knocking around. Mm -hmm. And now Silver Name has just got all the freeze in the world. But needs to make sure that he can actually progress into this game because doesn't have freeze for the face and ball control is about 18,000 damage with dual wielding two war glaives of azinoth times two yep. so far and again he does not have freeze for the face really in his deck because he's not playing the uh copy of deep freeze that um, a lot of people use hmm. for that purpose against demon hunter just to completely lock out the weapon charges when you get to the late game yeah he's got like a frost bolt right just a one, one frost bolt mm. yep but this might be where, again, kind of what we touched on a little bit earlier, where evocation can be used to just fish something out to do that turn and, and something to yeah, just sure. progress a little bit. Because, frankly, why not? He gets enough uh, goes at it with this small hand size that one mana, roll the dice, see what you can get, whether it's a good secret, a summon spell, just some damage. You know, it's worth it, I think. Depending on what he draws this yeah. turn, of course. I think, however, all things considered, he is miles ahead right now with uh, how strong his early game's mm -hmm. been. He had the Learn Draconic, he had the Flame Ward. I think those are the two key cards that you want to have early on. So, the, in terms of tempo, in terms of tempo, he's doing great. Agree. In terms of he might just die, maybe not yes. so great because there were just two sets of Wargraves, as mentioned earlier, and there's no good answer. And I don't even know what the good answer is from Silver Name. And most importantly, he has minion freeze, but he can't generate anything himself, which means the game's not going to end. That Silver Name can't kill ball control, so these Warglaives will get to go. Yeah, and I like this. Not not exactly a, you know, mind blowing at super high level play, but not worrying about the skull, not worrying about the Sator or anything like that. It's like do the thing he can't stop you doing, which is the wall claims. 
I'm just piecing together, by the way, and I don't know if this is the case, but it's possible that that Ray of Frost on the 3-3 three -three was, was like one necessary point of mana that he needed to activate an 8-8. Eight -eight. The reason I just realized that is because that's what that Frost Nova was about just then, is doing that exact thing with the Blizzard in order to get a 6-6 six -six into play. So that may have been the case with the Frost Nova on the previous he, occasion as well. To be fair, he did Apexis Blast to exactly 8 mana uh, for the quest. In that case, it all makes perfect sense, and I take all of it back. You can't, Sol. It's been done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I grow impatient. So, he's going to see the Adept frozen once again, and now it's a little bit different, where ball control is facing down a 6-6, six -six, but honestly, for me, I think I'd like to see ball control uh, continue on path. The path that's a direct line from his face to his opponent's I face. That, yes. Is that the path you're talking about? Yes. Okay. And of course, I can see, and we can see, that there's Nova, there's Blizzard, so more minions would easily get dealt with, and this mm. dragon might just win the game for Silver then. But I think from Ball Control's point, if he steps away and tries to kill this dragon, that is quite the committal. And I think it's a little bit too tough, at least for this turn. He rips the unoutcasted a skull of Gul'dan, which was a play I did just want to bring up there before he uh, before he did it because this second Warglaves isn't getting played anytime soon, right? It wasn't getting played that mm -hmm. turn because it'd be a Ooh. waste of damage. There's a question mark as to whether it gets played the next turn as well. Um, so it's a rare occasion you see this happen, but I think that might have been one of the ones where it was potentially correct. Yeah, and I think I don't think I like this play from Silvernaim. Go on. Because I was looking at next turn, he can apex his Blast Frost Nova. So I think maybe Blizzard this turn, which would have been slow, which, you know, which is unfortunate, but Blizzard attack, and then next turn, apex his Blast Face Frost Nova attack, you know, and, and go that way to end the game. Um, and just honestly, can hope that's enough. But now, you know, now he's kind of stuck if he, if he needs to freeze again. Well, he's got Blizzard, which means he can't Apex his Blast, and that's, that's a good chunk of damage. It's five damage and a minion. Well, so Silvername's plan is that he doesn't need to freeze again, because by doing it this way, he sets up lethal for himself. So he just has a Apex okay. Blast to the face plus the 6-6. Six, six. So his mentality was um, use the evocation there to just look for extra spells that can potentially be helpful. You can see how important that was, because he had an uh, Arcane patient. Breath, or whatever the card's called, one mm -hmm. mana, discover a spell, Blah blah blah, and he like he chose to just get one extra damage to ping face as opposed to using that to kill right. a minion in that scenario. Yeah. That ping to face was really really vital from his perspective. Yeah, and and to be fair, I guess the a six health is a lot of health for Demon Hunter to actually deal to a minion. Yep. So he's gonna be rewarded with this. It looks like that is gonna be the game. Remember when I said sometimes Mage burned you down with the dragons and a couple of spells? Yeah. It was a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. different because the freeze, but this does happen fairly regularly at least in my experience no i always believed you i was just i think we were in a time. warlock we were in a warlock matchup oh sure okay, I, sure I don't believe it's possible against warlock with the amount of healing they have available but i don't believe any win condition is possible against warlock to be fair right now but um you have a great but yeah it, and and matchups like the, the mage in my experience like i said has the capability to do things like that and again a little bit of disagreeing from me on on how at least i would have gone about it but as you quite rightly described he did lead up to just ending it in the same roundabout way anyway and it's really good in just terms of how different that game would have looked if it was combo demon hunter and not tempo because you can't really freeze them out right if it's combo the damage just comes and there's nothing you can do about it but silver name is going to go one game away from taking the series and taking the highest points for this week and putting himself in the best position in the whole of Europe Grandmasters for going into Division A in a couple of weeks' time. So it's looking pretty good for Silvername. And again, I don't think there are that many people that would have put him in with a chance of actually just winning it. Agreed. And I, I feel like I have to like stick up for him sometimes because... You know, I do, like, make fun of some of his decks some of the time or whatever, but, like, I also sit and think, well, wow, this guy's, like, playing really well. Like, I think he is a really, really, really smart Hearthstone player. And I want to reiterate again, like, his early game plays in that mage, now that I've realized about the, you know, the mana utilization for the for the secret, made perfect sense, you know? And, like, he was, hmm. he was playing that game incredibly well. Um, and I do think he's a very, very smart, very, very capable Hearthstone player. I think just sometimes... His his decks let him down. Sometimes his decks are the one. Uh, you know, his 
being willing to do something a little bit different is very much to his benefit. I feel like you have like a, almost a, a little brother effect with Silver Name, where it's like, well, you can trash talk him because he's your brother. But if anyone else does, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Calm down. It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> you know, like, I'm allowed to say bad things about him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, something like that. That sounds about right. Yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Ball control does have that special site active, and a turn later it might not be, but he could just go for the say to Overseer, just plain and simple. And that is what he goes for, but bees! As ball control just gives a nod going, oh yeah, Silver Name's playing cards like that. Damn. <laughs> As uh, the bees come down, take down the Sator, and now ball control is back to square one. He could now actually go for Kane into the uh, twin slice and get a foul wing in if he really wants. Is that too much, Sol? It's a lot. Sets up for a Skull lot, soon. A lot might be necessary, yeah. I mean, those cards have to get played, right? It looks like, you know, all of that stuff turn four, Spectral Sight turn five, Skull turn six. It's a curve. Mm-hmm. I like it, honestly. I, th I think versus Druid, you put your foot down and keep going. <laughs> so uh, it seems to add up, and he's not even having to sacrifice both parts of Twin Slice. He still gets hold of one for later if he needs it. Yeah. I will still find you. Yeah, looks like he's getting up. I like it. You've just seen bees as well, and you've got to imagine that the removal is going to be fairly limited for Silver Name. So, what is he realistically going to do about a 3 3 and a 3 5 on the board? Coin Glowfly Swarm. I mean, that's what you're probably most scared of in this matchup mm. as, a, as a tempo deck coming up against them. So, I think he's just load, loading up the maximum pressure. Are you scared of that, or are you scared of Overgrowth more? Uh, mm, they're both bad. You don't <laughs> want to see either of them, ideally. I think you beat Overgrowth more often, if I had to guess. Okay. Especially in Silver Name's deck, where he has Anubisaf Defenders to go along with his Glowfly Swarm, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that does actually make the difference. What? Because he can fit it in as well, right? He can make it work. Just because he doesn't fill the board with glow flies is, is what I mean, in case. Yeah, in case yeah, you're wondering. yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't need to trade, he only gets four, right? Looked no like he was uh, one, suiciding two, two. a 1-1 yep. to make space. He doesn't need to suicide the 1-1. Mm -hmm. So okay. Silverdome playing a 0 mana 3-5 without taunt right now. <laughs> yes. Oh, I see. He just wanted to make that attack anyway, just to make it. Yeah, sure, that seems fairly reasonable. When everything on your board is a 2-2, I guess that seems like a reasonable preemptive attack to make. Get this second slice right. out of the way, rip the spectral sight. He's going to need an Altruist very, very, very soon indeed. He has got the card draw for it, though, hasn't he? You know, he has Skull into Sigil Runner. Skull's going to draw three. Sigil Runner, not necessarily next turn, but soon, will be naturally active for the uh, for the Outcast slot, which means that's going to draw as well. So this is... I think this one's going to come down to the Y. It's going to come down to that one turn where one of the players will be able to push the other one off the board, and then the game will probably just end. Yes. One of the unique benefits of ignoring Taunt, thanks to Kane Sun Fury making better trades believe it or not that is a thing demons demons time grows short have you just been sickened into silence by the idea of trading with Kane? yeah i heard ignoring taunt so you can trade and it sounds yeah. like a ridiculous idea so you yeah. ignore taunt so you can smoke more we all know this Ball control just looks like he just doesn't really know what to do. And it's not that he doesn't really know what to do. It's that he doesn't enjoy the options he has uh, for him there. It's like nothing he can do feels great. Two Einbarks oh! now for Silver Name. And they're free. And they're free. Oh, that's disgusting. And you might say, well, Einbarks aren't that good versus Kane. He can kill Kane this turn. So they are yep. good again. Yep. Watching Boar's face. There's one. I think it's going to stay in this vague region of abject misery for the remainder of this game, if I had to predict. Oh. 
No, nope, no, nope, there you go. <laughs> no, 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 okay. Okay, a little Cannot bit of salt did it. come out. Oh, Alright, fair enough. Oh, oh, he does have Skull of Godan, though, so this is um, the best answer often Ooh. to a bad turn against you as Demon Hunter is to Skull of Gul'dan for three zero mana cards. If one of those zero mana cards is going to be Altruis, exactly, mm. then heck yeah, sign me up. So does Ball Control wait a turn now so he can potentially cash in on the value of the Spectral Sight, drawing two more cards to maybe combo with? Well, he'd have to... It, it, I mean, it's rolling the dice, right? Because you have to Altruis and then play your rightmost outcast cards. Mm. Actually, no, you don't. But, you could still play Altruis and work from the left yes. in that position as well. And also yeah. with seven mana, mm -hmm. it's pretty likely you're going to be able to get the card off without too much of a trouble, right? But now, thanks to the overflow, you have to deal eight to this Anubis Ave Defender, which, yeah. you know, it can be done, but it's, it's, it's challenging. Oh, it can be done. I swear I've been an Altruist for 100 before. I killed an Alexstrasza and two Winged Guardians on day one with Demon Hunter. It, it made me so happy. <laughs> and made your opponent uninstall the game. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Blizzard, but I cost you that guy's packs. He did not buy any more after I beat him in that game because he uninstalled the client. Ow, I just punched my desk. I don't know why. The Glaybound Adept, uh, one of the, obviously, the more expensive ones, which means Altruis is definitely significantly worse. That turn, ball control goes for the not playing the Altruis instead and just saving it for a bit of a rainier day, which is probably going <laughs> to come up pretty soon as Silvername is cooking up a storm. Can you have the read? I think you should have the read, right? From Silvername's position, none of the zero mana cards have been played. Right. Like, does that smell fishy to anyone else? Because it, it sure does to me. And also, it's getting to the point where it's the only thing you're going to lose to as well. So not only is there a slight hand read, but there's also a, well, at this point, the only card that beats me, Kane is gone, so there's no skipping taunts. The only thing that really beats me is an Altruist, right? So yes. I think there's just an enforced level of, as long as Altruist doesn't just wipe me out, I win the game. So what do I do to try and beat that or to negate it at least? So on that note, was the right thing to do here just to sort of ask your opponent for four AOE? It doesn't feel like the right thing to do. What else could he have done? What what was so drawn, what were drawn other cards, options? Like fungal fortunes. Oh, yeah, okay, kind of okay, yeah. Just looked and for a, a bigger power play. Is his worry so eventually that if he... you eventually you force the clear on a smaller board than this, right? Yes. Is his worry that if he draws and doesn't gain anything then he misses out on the force of nature and so on to be able to get it down quick enough and then he fears them that window might be big enough for ball control to get the win i don't even know if you to even if you totally whiff there you can still like have bog beam the minion and hero power as your turn and then you just have a four eight on the board okay. and still just smack him in the face i don't know it seems fine well ball control doing altruist things and what was his draw? Twin oh. slice? Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my double goodness. Oh, and he got the war glaives. Okay. What was that? One yeah. million damage by my account. Roughly one million damage, yeah. He round it up a little bit. I'm also curious with the line that Silvername did end up taking, whether you are even supposed to bog beam the 3-2 in that world. Because, again, you were talking in terms of, like, maybe Altruis is the only thing that beats you. In which case, you really need to have a Bog Beam in your hand, because you have to kill Altruis. Yeah, yeah, when it comes you can't down. live, can you? Yeah. yeah. As it happens, of course, card draw into card draw. He did find the second Bog Beam, so no harm done in the end, from Silvername's perspective. This one is going right the way down to the wire, though, Raven. I agree, and I, I feel like maybe the Power of the Wild was worth it there, just as maybe another tool to trade. Uh, oh, you want to Vate it? Vate Power? Yeah, because although Vate is very powerful, is he really like relying on drawing exactly KT next turn? Maybe. I think, I mean, yeah, there's five there's... cards left, right? Mm. I think playing to it is a reasonable thing. So ball control, not too fussed about his health. The uh, the nature of this druid's damage is very visible and, uh, and pretty straightforward. So on 24 against an empty board, he is not going to die. So he can use the weapon there just to plow through, push as much damage as possible. Next turn, he has Glaive Bound Adept 
from hand. So as long as he can swing in some way or another, this Glaive Bound is going to do full damage where he chooses. And Silver Name does not have a way to heal out of range. He does have a hero power, but he needs a large amount he of He can't taunt as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah. What to do? Overgrowth does draw him a card, but it's a ton of mana to be spending just to draw a card here. Yep. And he can't aeroponics into um into KT, so he kind of has to overgrowth if he needs KT or if he feels he needs it to do something. That's not it. Just rip it. Discard your KT for the stream silver name. Come on, just just play it the fun. Actually, fortunes. will as well, won't it? Yep. Yep. Do it. Do it. He doesn't have a play that stays alive, right? Even from his perspective. Uh, I don't think so because he can't taunt anything, right? And he can't kill it all. Like I said, this is what happens when druids stop you uh, running swipe. So then I'm just gonna play it out, but he knows it's over. And he's gonna play uh, fatigue himself at zero mana aeroponics. Which means ball control is going to even it up. It looks like Silvername could have got it there. But ball control with the help of a skull into an Altrius means that he had the AoE to be able to just clear that one big board. And then it all looks good from there. Yeah, I think that the one the, that turn where he got Altrius was the big talking point. Obviously, it's the swing turn of the game. It's the game where Boar took over after being behind for large periods of it. But the yeah. reason I call it the big talking point is I don't know if Silvername needed to expose himself to the Altruis as much as he did. Um, I think he was in a position where he just had a 4-8 taunt against a relatively empty board, and he could have maintained that position um, by just killing the 7-4. It was a lot of damage to take because you do have to hero power it and then just continue to draw through his deck. Now, what I will say is when I say continue to draw through your, through your deck there, I'm looking to hit the Kael'thas within my next six, right. eight cards or so, right? Because then you can just Giga pop off and get your, your Gift of the World and everything done in the same turn. Make a board that's really resistant to Altruis because it's too big. Even in, even in the world that I'm suggesting, if my KT's bottom two, I'm not, I wasn't going to win that game, you know? So yeah. maybe, maybe there was just nothing Silvername could have done about it. Yeah, and it's one of the questions I think overall that the the Druid deck does raise is that if you're running, you know, Gift of the Wild, Forest Aid, you know, the double overflow and everything, if you're in that and you, you are reliant on KT a lot of the time to even utilize these cards, honestly, mm -hmm. then without being able to tutor KT out in some way other than just normal drawing, it... it is it consistent enough? Probably, because a lot of players are bringing it and playing it and having success with it. But I think you really have to sort of reanalyze the deck and maybe a few players are building it a bit too heavy on the expensive spells to, you know, versus the off the amount of times you actually get that good KT off. Because without it, Gift of the Wild becomes almost impossible to play, I feel. Well, either way, that is the past. And now we have a final game in our final series, Ball Control versus Silver Name. This is going to decide who is going home with all the marbles, and by all of the marbles, I mean six of the marbles, and by marbles, I mean points. Yeah, one of those ones is like one of the metallic ones as well that's like mm. super cool and heavier. Yeah. It's worth more. But yeah, yeah. overgrowth there for Silver Name on this druid, which means he is just uh, doing the thing that he needs to do, getting tons of mana, being able to start creating these boards. But as I said before, without double Soul of the Forest, I feel like it's so much harder to take down I Warlock. Th I think you're very tunneled on that card, Raven. We'll see, Sol. We'll see. Yeah. Ball Control, though, currently playing the token deck himself. <laughs> Just uh, pressuring yep. Silver Name, actually, in a significant amount of damage. What's he have? Five, six, seven, eight, nine? That's not bad. Not when Silver Name can't really stop it, apart from using these two Anubisas along with the Glowfly, but that's a lot of resources, actually. And if this board is cleaned up now from Ball Control, which a single Plague of Flames would do. Uh, I wouldn't be so sure about that, Raven. <laughs> Oh, the double. See, see, Soul yeah. of the Forest winning games. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, I was just okay. If Soul of the Forest wasn't there, Silver Name's pretty much gone all in, right? Yeah. <laughs> you it's, can it's, tell he's gone all in by the fact that all of his cards are on the board. <laughs> but it's just crazy because this, with 
with ball control already having a one-to-one -one ratio of minions, uh, yeah. this isn't an unclearable board. Yeah. If ball control had but, no minions, I would be like, fair play, silver name, just go. You're running I mean, into Gift you, of the Wild next turn. What were you going to do? Like, wait and hero power down his minions one by one each turn? Like, no, um, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Like, oh, I'm not saying I had a better plan, Saul. Don't get me okay, wrong. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying that 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 because oh, Ball managed to set up this early board, he's actually got not an easy job, but a fairly relaxed job, I would say, of clearing this up. Mm. And he knows, unless that card is what exactly overflow, maybe Fungal Fortunes, the silver name is almost out of the game if Ball Control can clean this up right now. Yeah, I mean, the clear isn't straightforward, right? Like, this part is straightforward, but now now there are some question marks. We have to coin the Dark Skies. Mm -hmm. If we learn anything from yesterday, Dark Skies just randomly doesn't kill the Moloch. <laughs> Remember that yesterday? Or was it the day before? It was yesterday, yeah. <laughs> it was crazy that the Moog was just like, I'm still 2-4. Like, what? Only one shot hit the Moog, though. That's a pretty good outcome. Um, yep. Worth noting, by the way, just in case anyone's not familiar with the interaction, even if the Moog was to die to the very first two shots, they still all continue to do two after. Yes. The effect is committed at the point of spell cast, right? Yes. Not a, a effect, or whatever you want to call it. Yes. And now, good job for Silvername there. Might look a little bit weird, but by tanking the one damage on the uh, the Moag, you got an extra B, and guess what? Especially with Gift of Wild in hand, you want as many tokens as possible. Ball got yeah, the choice yeah between, smart play. Yeah, Ball got the choice between Coil and Nether Breath. Nether Breath seemed more better at using mana. But Coil would have cycled him a card as well. I don't think I'm overly Ooh, fussed either one, but there is an baby. over overflow. If there's ever a card that's going to pull Silvername back into the driver's seat, it is that one. He just smacks it and just hit, takes the healing. Yeah, sure. Because if he draws a bog beam, he draws a bog beam anyway. No, it's not, it's not the worst card to hold, is it? You're going to deal with it first and then Yeah, sure. Yeah, because he'd it, heal it back otherwise, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just said, like, he might just be committing to going face there in that position. Like, he could have overflowed first. Then if he'd drawn a bog beam, he can kill it afterwards with the bog beam and the hero power. It's the other way around that he could have done it, right? Sure. That's not funny, though, is it? <laughs> okay, so. Now, silver name is kind of... Not in the driver's seat, I'd say, but back on track. Uh, of at least having cards to play, which is off often a good start in the game of Hearthstone. But Glowfly Swarm can be played out, but again, a good chunk of it just gets traded off to what's already on board. Yeah. Which again is just it's just a nightmare. And Silvername halfway through his deck and no KT, as far as I can see. The good news for Silvername though is that like super all in opening has siphoned a lot of removal away what? from board. Yeah. He's down a Nether Breath, he's down a Plague of Flames, and he's down a Dark Skies. So now with Silvername's extra, you know, extra stuff that he has in the deck, the Force of Nature's and all that extra business that he has, maybe he just has enough board in a can to be able to outlast the removals one by one if he can get to that stage. But I think you're right, is that he does have to worry a little bit about the fact he's just under pressure right now. Yeah, I was just going to say, on top of that, Silvername has the, the gas, but Ball Control might just beat him up now, and, and that's the that's the fear factor, right? He can make yeah. a board, but if Ball Control just takes this board down and plays just bigger stuff, uh, forgive me, I'm not 100% sure what the Galakrond is on. Can I get a Galakrond check, Sol? It is on two. two I, I, I thought as much, but I just went to double check. Do you think this is a matchup where you could Galakrond early just to be able to use, say, for example, Kronks as an AoE? Great possibly, yeah. I think that's a real thing. If you if your hand is AoE light as well, certainly, which right. Wars is a little bit right now. Just the one Plague of Flames, no Netherwing, no uh, second Dark Skies mm -hmm. as it stands. Because I wonder, even now, Galakrond gains in five armor, so he is fairly safe, would you say? Yep, yep. And... Next turn, you just crunk the board away. He can trade off a 3-3 with, uh, with the Albatross. You never know. His demons, he might get a taunt. You know, he might get something nice for it from the demons. He does get two. But I think it's as 
good a setup as he's going to get, especially with, as, as you saying, he is running a little bit dry on removal. Also, it gives him the Galakrond hero power, which makes this Plague of Flames a little bit easier to activate. He can also Sacrificial Pact next turn if he needs it to heal, because he, again, he can generate the demons. Right. Yeah, makes sense to me. You create a compelling argument. Now and again, it works. Demon-wise, not great. But again, with only two demons popping out, you can't really be reliant on getting something amazing, right? Your chances are significantly decreased. And now, if Gift of the Wild comes out here for Silver Name, it's actually a bit of a problem because it does get cleaned up. Hmm. It does. Pushes an enormous amount of damage hmm. in the meantime, though. But if he can't do a finisher, which he, he can't, unless he draws more cards, is in trouble. So I do like this Fungal Fortunes first. Let's just, uh, for him to give a quick overview of what's going on. There's KT discarded. Oh. Ball control takes a victory swig from his, uh, his, his, his thing there. Because that has got to feel pretty good at this point in the game. And you see Boar nodding. He will continue to nod. Now, does Silvername... Okay, okay, that's a very smart trade on Silvername's side. Yeah. Sacrificing the damage to send the 5-2 into the 3-3 three, three to make sure his 6-8 is maintained against a Kronk's AoE. And but I think Boar does still have that covered with the Nether. Yeah, I think it's really good recognition because it's not rocket science, but Silvername had to sit there and go, why would he Galakrond on 2? What, what is his hand to Galakrond on 2? Right? Galakrond so, on two. Oof. That's yeah. that's a game of Hearthstone I want to play. <laughs> you understand what I meant. Um, but yeah, he's can two. Bang! <laughs> Imagine! Just four revoke Galakrond. Let's play the game. Claw to the face. Another breath going to come out, though. A bit of a nod from Silvername saying, yep, something pretty big needs to happen now because not only does he need to threaten some damage, but once again, ball control is air quotes winning on board i think silver name's uh camera might be slightly ahead of uh of your feed and what he was reacting to was actually that force of nature draw because it, it brought oh. his hand to get because he gets to double aeroponics for free now which is pretty nutty okay that probably makes sense albatross token ball control giving silver name some gas here <laughs> He's just out of stuff. Very much so, yeah. Even something as as maybe looks a little bit less significant, but this Moag and Mortal Coil in Ball Control's hand. Pretty big deal. He can just kill off a token. The hero power with sacrificial pacts times two means ball control can heal for ten on demand. He's got Plague, he can activate whenever, if he fancies it. And I think even Silvername's list of extra uh, boards in a can, as you like to refer to it, Sotl, is mm -hmm. just not going to be enough to take down Warlock. It is very much looking that way indeed. Oh, look, I don't know what that one's board control. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the Netherwing. It was just like, oh, oh. That was a good Netherwing draw. Yeah, he almost got slightly too excited about <laughs> it and just Netherwinged his own demon away for absolutely no reason. But <laughs> apart from that, pretty solid turn. Yep, the Albatross has been to the Demon Gym because that is a big boy. That is certainly one Albatross you do not want to wear around your neck. Overgrowth here. Not going to do much. And honestly, as I said before, I think Silvername is just out of things. Especially, you know, Shield Galakron going to be a taunt in the way. Ball Control is just jamming the Alexstrasza because oh, he no, knows. Oh, no, activated it. Activated it. Yeah, yeah. The draw he's jamming the Alexstrasza because he knows he just can't die. So he doesn't actually need to play the taunt anyway. I can see. And, and there you look is the concede. That. The hometown boys come good, Raven. <laughs> Our little ball control's all grown up, and he is the week one champion of European Grandmasters. They grow up so fast, sir. And the oh, victory cat. Oh. <laughs> I want a victory cat. Where's my... All right, I'm going to get my cat. 
Are you actually? <laughs> I, was, I wouldn't have been surprised knowing you, Saul. Um, but yeah, congratulations to Ball Control. Great job for Silvername. Just a shout out as well. Although, you know, he, he lost second place is a very good amount of points for him to, you know, achieve in week number one of the the Swiss uh, group, so uh, within three weeks, so it's looking really good for him. But ball control, one week. Not only did he win this portion, he also, remember, finished first place in the Swiss. So he actually finished first twice this week, kind of. So he's just had an insane performance uh, this week, and I, I feel that just bodes even better for him for next week. Is it going to stop, or is ball control just going to steamroll Grandmasters? I would love to see that happen. Uh, like I said, you know, ball control UK player, someone that I've known in and around the scene for quite some time. Uh, someone whose stream I very much enjoy watching. So I'd, you know, I'd love to see him doing well in Grandmasters. But uh, if anything, we've shown today that the French players are beatable. It can be done, despite what we've seen uh, in the last few months. It is possible to defeat France at a game of hearts. Yes, it is. Uh, congratulations, though, to, of course, Falcon and Zim. You see there get third and fourth, which are joint equal points. They both get four points. Uh, Silverdame will be on five. Bow Control will be on six. And then blah, blah, blah. So on, so on, so on. For the rest of the year. Uh, for, the, for the rest of the players. Yaddy, 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 and then, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. let's be honest, who cares? No, I'm only joking. Um, but yeah, so they put themselves, all four of those players put themselves in a fantastic position there. Like, I mean, obviously there was eight of them, but who, who do you...